All right, so let's touch back on your entertainment side. So you're a comedian, right? Yes, sir. Made me laugh real quick. Oh, see, I get that all the time too. You know, you know, people say that all the time. Give me a joke. Give me a joke. It's like, like I tell people all the time. Well, look at you, I'm on stage and it's different when you just like, like right now I'm cool. I'm talking mm -hmm. and I'm not in performance mode. But when I get on stage, you be like, who's that dude up there? Because I he wasn't talking like that. It's just a different vibe you get. I you know, you know what I'm talking when you get on stage. But yeah, yeah. I definitely want to get into the music stuff too to talk to you about that because you know I drop music. I be playing my own music in my uh, on my channel when yeah. I do my background songs and stuff like that. Yeah. But I want to get a little bit more into the comedy. So I know uh, dating an African woman, uh, yeah. you know, I be cracking the jokes and stuff, and sometimes <laughs> she don't get. <laughs> She don't yeah, get yeah. the context. Like, you know, I watched a lot of uh, Martin Lawrence growing up right, at the Martin right, show, right? So right. I'll make a reference to somebody. And at she first she, she wouldn't know what I was talking about. I was like, you know, I'm like, damn, bro, yeah, man. Yeah. And then she she was looking crazy at first. And then I had her watch it with me and then she understood. Yeah, yeah. So how do you feel your, you know, comedic expression will relate to the continental Africans. Yeah, that's the question I have, man. But I was trying to think of how this is going to work because, you know, what we do in America is not necessarily what they do here in Africa. So it's like you got to, you know, comedy is all about rel rel relativity. They got to re relate to what, you know, what you're talking about. But I do know one core thing that can never, that can transcend any group of culture of people and that's relationships. Mm -hmm. And I'm a heavy relationship guy. So when you talk about relationships, every woman know about cheating, whether they're in Africa or America. Mm -hmm. Everybody know about a love, where everybody know about pain and hurt and heartbreak, you know. And so that's something that you can always talk about with relationships in any country, for that matter, and make people laugh because we all relate to relationships. So that's kind of where I said, okay, that's going to be my vein. That's going to be where I kind of focus all my jokes. And I got that from Chris Rock. He said that relationships is your common funny denominator. And I said, okay, that is perfect. So... Can't lose when you talk about relationship because love is love can be funny and love can be you know uh, relatable. Everybody can relate to it. Facts. All right. So you mentioned music. So what type of music are you into specifically? Well, you know, we grew up with the R and B. You know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying you know uh, all the old school, the new school, the '90s, and all that. So that's that's my history. But I knew when I came to Africa, I was like, what am I gonna do here though? Like, what am I gonna do in Africa that can stand out? Now we know Afrobeats is the that and I know piano is, is coming up now, but um, but Afrobeats is the that's the that's the hip hop of Africa basically. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how can I connect with my music here but have my Air America vibe? So I came up with something that I, I termed that I'm a coin called Afro R and Beats. Nice. So it got like R and B vibe to it because that's you know come from yes the R Kelly's and the 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 uh, you know all the the barge and all the you know back mm -hmm. in the '90s. Uh, but with the same thing we're here, I'm like, okay, can I do Afro beats and have R&B vibe to it? So I'm going to do an Afro beat with an R&B vibe, which ain't here. And, and real quick, man, I'm, I'm big on voids, man. If it, if, it, if it don't exist, I want to feel it. If it ain't there, I want to be, I want to put it there. That's kind of my mm -hmm. whole thing when I think about creating stuff. If I don't see something there, I'm going to be the one to create it first. And that's just how I move. So when I thought about Afro beats, and it's beautiful music, but they don't really have the R&B vibe like we got. So what if I were to fuse the two and be nice. Afro R&B beats? So that's kind of how I'm approaching. So it's different. It's unique. Hope it works, but it's, it, should, it should work. I'm pretty good at what I do. Right. So I was going to also ask about the movie side, but as I've been seeing, uh, a lot of our uh, media is coming over, especially when it comes to like reality TV yeah. and that type of vibe. You know, I'm seeing... Um, you know, what is it, The Real Housewives at Africa or Cape Town or Joe Bird? Yeah. It was something like that, yeah, similar. Yeah, I saw it. But yeah, so uh, what type of, you know, when it comes to the entertainment as far as media, what type of media do you plan on putting out? Well, I think one thing is missing, and you, you, you're you instrumental in this too, doing what you've been doing, man, and along with a lot of other YouTubers for America. One thing I think is missing in America is a common media strictly for African expats. And that's something I'm, I'm heavy on. When we come over here, I, this should be something for us. A channel, a network, something that we can tune into, almost like a, his, a Hispanic channel. When they got Telemundo, that's strictly for them. News, uh, advertisement. We should have that same kind of thing here in America. I mean, I'm sorry, Africa. So that made me think, yeah, Africa Expat TV or Africa Expat Media. Strictly for what's going on with us over here in America on a news level, on an advertisement level, on a um, um, comedy level, on an entertainment level, on a music level. What are we doing over here so that everybody over there can see us and people here can see what the African 
expats are doing here in Africa. So that's important to me. I, so I thought something like that. And that's kind of what you do. That's kind of what a lot of expert um, uh, YouTubers do where, mm -hmm. you know, you're reporting what's going on. But what if we had that like on our, like a network, like right. a full blown network where all your stuff is on that channel. So radio, all that stuff. So that's kind of what my head is at. Right. That I think that would be dope and it would be like concurrent to us because I've seen the BET over here and it's not like we, we don't really get into that backstage side. Like yeah. I, I told him, like, man, I, I stopped watching BET a long time ago. It got corny. Too, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So uh, but what do you feel about the negative feedback you'll get from that? Because, you know, a lot of uh, when it comes to Africa and the continent and us bringing our own stuff over here, they yeah. kind of like, you know, they give us pushback with that sometimes. Yeah. So how do you feel you will get around that? You, you, you refer to the, the locals here? In yes, because, oh, you yeah. know, sometimes they'll be like, well, you you in Africa, you, you should adopt to the way we do things, just right. like how when we come to America, yeah. we have to. But if you really think about it, I, every place I went to when I lived in Asia, there was a little Africa. When right. I lived in, yeah. you know, America, there's going to be little yeah. Africas. Yeah. So I feel like we we have uh, we should have the same thing. And I was noticing as I travel around Africa, there are small, like, little congregations of Americans. But most of the time, we'd be, we be split up. But yeah. when you go to anywhere else, it's little China town it's little right. korea right. right so no that's a good question and i think and what you're basically saying is we need to have our presence wherever we are mm. and our presence should be felt here as, as well i think a lot of people forget that you know african americans while we are connected to this continent we're still a unique group of people we come from a different situation even though we're connected you know spiritually and we're having from the the motherland perspective the ancestral perspective but we come from a different background because of the trauma we went through and I think a lot of people don't address that. I know a lot of African Africans might not know our full history in that way. And it's not that they have to know, but it's, it's, it's might be good to learn a little bit about what, why we are who we are and the way we are, you know? And because we, we come from a history that I think people are overlooking that explains why we are who we are, why we talk the way we talk, why we think the way we think, why we behave the way we behave, because we come from a totally different, put it this way, we are the only group of people that has lived with majority of other groups of people. Whereas mostly Africans live among Africans. Mostly Chinese live among Chinese. We lived among every one of y'all. So we had to learn how to deal and adapt to all you different nationalities and still try to find our own identity, which we didn't do good at doing. So I think when we go to a country like, or a place like Africa, our, our African-American selves should be present. We should have a presence of who we are, but we should also tie with the locals because they are brothers and sisters too, cousins and nieces and uncles. But we should tie with them too, but we still gotta be who we are. And I think, I don't wanna lose I, I don't like everything about America, but I am still black American mm -hmm. and I'm not really going to let, I can't let that go. It's, it's who I am, right. but I want to be a, associate myself to that wherever I go. Okay. I do have some questions to ask you on that. So I get that flack a lot when I say I'm American. I did a video talking about the differences in clubs between Rwanda and Nairobi. Yeah. And I was like, man, you know, in Nairobi, I had a hard time finding hip hops in a lot of spots. Mm -hmm. So uh, somebody commented it. Well, uh, man, you got to start. Uh, well, what I said was, I'm American, so sometimes I like to hear some hip hop. Absolutely. Yeah, and somebody come in, bro, you got to drop that. I'm American stuff. Uh, what what okay. did America do for you? This, that, and the third. I'm like, man, you took that out of context. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, how do you feel as far as the powers that be? Because I feel like they put a negative image of us in Africa. Sure. And for you to want to put a positive image, do you yeah. think you're going to get some flack? Because I noticed a lot, of, a lot of the stuff that they show Africans about us is, you know, the gangsterism yeah. Yeah. and, yeah. and uh, the ghetto-ness yeah. and the stuff like that. And yeah. a lot of the Africans are catching on. Like, that's, you know, it's entertaining. Right. So how do you feel the pushback from the powers that be will yeah. be? Well, it's unfortunate that they do associate all of us to that those bads part of our culture because those are a part of who we where we come from we can't deny that crime and, and and killing and all those things aren't something that we are a part of but that's not necessarily saying that's who we are and i think we got to get more back into who we are who we were before all this trauma and slavery and stuff happened and i think when we can get back to that and let people understand that that's really what we want to get back to that person which i think the only way we can get back to that is if we come back to the place where we, got, we started which is here now we know africa is a different place than thousands of years ago, but that doesn't take away from the fact that we can still harness who our true essence and our, our heritage is as, as people that are polite people, kind people, uh, loving people. Um, we got to keep in mind that Af America made us into something that we really not. It, it just did because we didn't control our destiny. We was cohoosed to be a certain kind of person that came from the way they treated us. 
But even in that, we still was able to figure out, we, we know that we're not those crimes, we're not those killings, we're not those, all those negative things that unfortunately is glorified as a thing. Those are images that was perpetrated, perpetrated on us. So now we need to say, okay, listen, we're gonna tell you who we really are. We royalty, we rich, we awesome, we are smart, we are resilient, we can, get, we can get out of any situation, we're geniuses. And that's what we need to get back to. And I know it's hard because they made those negative images so big and glorified, but I think what we need to do is just focus on the awesomeness of who we all are. And that's gonna take something like people like you, um, people like your girl and, and myself, and people that's coming here to say, that's not just who we are, yeah, that exists, but we are gonna show you there's another side to us. And it's way better than that. But unfortunately, it takes, it's gonna take a lot because that is a big image of us, that negative stuff, it's a big image. And for us to combat that image with some positivity, it's always tough, but it's not impossible. So I just think we gotta put, put out, let, let people know who we really are. All right, appreciate that. And last couple questions. So what do you feel about the, or sorry, how do you feel about the infrastructure? So have you seen any wild elephants and lions and uh, what else they say? Uh, what, what is tigers it? And tigers and yeah. stuff rocking across yeah. the street? Like, Not is it? Just Not just shit. I saw a cow yesterday for the first time. I heard a move out the yard, out the window. And I was like, what? And, I went, and it was just a guy slapping his cow in the back, walking down. And I've seen cows before. But I ain't just walking free. They've been at a place we had to go see some cows. Right. This cow was free. He was not. A, he wasn't no slave cow. He was free. Right, yeah. So he was just enjoying his freedom. So, so that, you know, I haven't seen too much, and we haven't went any places to see anything. But you know, it, it, we haven't seen nothing like that. But the infrastructure, as far as like the, the roads and stuff like that, and I will, I will say this: nothing against Rwanda, but they drive is a little unique. It's a little. It ain't quite like ours at home. But they actually do a good job because you can tell there's a method to that the kind of madness of mm -hmm. how they drive because I can see, okay, y'all do actually communicate on the road. It's just different than how we communicate. Right. So, but that was one thing that threw me off. Their driving was a little bit, ooh, made me nervous. Like, you gonna hit me or, we, or what's gonna happen? Are we gonna get in an accident? Cause you getting too close. Right. But I was, it, it, but my driver was pretty good. So I said, okay, I'm gonna just trust him. And I noticed when you drive, just don't look at them driving. Just look, do some work, do your phone. Cause if you do, you gonna think you gonna get an accident. So. But yeah, the infrastructure is cool, and uh, it, it, they, they're definitely getting things going out here. And here's one more thing that I thought was very unique. A lot of times they tell you that Africa don't have nothing. Africa ain't got what we got in America, and you're going to do it, deal with a lot. Yeah, and there's some truth to that, but they pretty much got everything we got. I have not, I'm sorry to say, okay, hold on, they got everything. Now, you got to find it in a different place than you would at home, but you can find toilets, brand new toilets, you can find chandeliers, you can find... All the foods you want, it be, might be a different brand, but it's still the same food. Now, I will say that I haven't found no grits. I haven't seen grits in a long time. I haven't found no grits. I'm looking for some grits they got, here in Africa. They got corn and maize meal. I mean, it's technically the same thing, isn't it? I haven't seen that yet. I'm looking yeah, for it. Yeah, you got to go to these local, well, see, yeah, local, yeah, right. these local markets, yeah. but I'm... Yeah. Ooh, grits. Yeah, that's the only thing I ain't seen. I like me some grits. Man. I like me some grits, so... Some, in the morning, some grits. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's what I haven't seen, but I'm going to take your word for going to find some... Some the, the corn, we say corn. Uh, corn meal. You go, but see, you got to make it from scratch. It's not that's like going to cool. come in the box like yeah, we yeah, did back cool. home. That's how we got to do it. Yeah, for Those sure. Instant grits? Seen, you know, no, no. We don't do instant grits. We don't do instant grits. No. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I haven't seen no grits, so that's one thing I haven't seen. Okay, so now we're on the subject of food. Have you tried any traditional foods? Um, not No, I will, I will say samosas. And I was making, I, I cooked too, so I was making samosas when, in America, but... Rwanda is known for their samosas. Like mm. they have the best samosas. Samosas is like a pastry with beef or, mm -hmm. you know, you know what it is. Okay. You, you had it yet? Samosas yet? Uh, I had one. Like the beef patty? Okay. It's kind of yeah. like a beef patty. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kind of like a beef patty. But Rwanda is known for samosas here, you know? Okay. And that's what, that's one thing that's, that's the only thing I really had. I haven't had anything else other than that I've been eating um, at the uh, a cafe here where they just pretty much have American food. But it's mm. an American kind of cafe. So if you're craving, mm. The burgers and the craving, you know, mm -hmm. the, the stuff that we usually eat, that, that's they have. And it, they do have one dishes as well, but I usually go there just to get some American stuff. But samosa is the only thing I've ever had. Okay, and my last question for you is going to be 
back onto the women because you know I have a mostly male channel and yes, that's sir. the questions they yes, ask. Sir. So can you just go into detail about what do you see when you see the women like body types, facial structures, hair? Because you know a big question is you know oh, I don't like weave yeah, or yeah. I don't like lace yeah, fronts, yeah. I don't like acrylic nails. Yeah. Like are are they more natural here to you or do you see a lot of natural hair? Yeah. Uh, the body types are they you know more slim thick or they thick thick right, right, or right. you know. One thing about it, man, it's, a, it's like a home, it's a melting pot. You got a lot of different everything, you know, so it's kind of what you like is here. Um, they got the weaves, they got the natural hair, they got the braids, you know, they got the thick, they got the thin, they got the slim, they got, you know, the athletic build. They got all of it. So if, if you know what you want and you like, I'm, I like multiple women, so I like, I want this one, I want that one, and I want this one. So you can pick, it's, it's a lot to pick from because a lot of beautiful, different kind of African women here. Um, Personality-wise, man, you pretty much can't lose with them. And these women are just absolutely just uh, meant and beautiful when it comes to just treating you and serving you and loving you and you know nurturing you. They just they're just a natural thing. And I know our women in America is good for that too, but they've been challenged with that that situation. But mm -hmm. here, they ain't really <laughs> they don't have the biggest challenge with relationships. So a lot of these women here I notice are they 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 love love. And you want a woman that love love, because that if you get a woman that love love, you're gonna be love. Right. And a lot of women here, I know, they really love the idea of having a relationship. They want to be in a relationship, mm -hmm. most of them, if not all of them. And I think that it, you know, if you're serious about really connecting, have a good connection with a woman, African woman, man, it's here because these women really are they 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 are like being raised to love a man mm -hmm. and, and and honor a man. And, you know, it, man, we're not quite used to that at home as much. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that we don't want it, but we're not really used to a woman being that, not even submissive, but that connecting to what, you know, what you want and what you mm -hmm. deserve, what you desire. And when you meet a woman like that, it kind of throws you off because you're like, okay, you used to a woman, you know, being this good. Mm -hmm. But it is something that is definitely beautiful. And I've met a few women and, and I, you know, got some good conversations and it's not difficult to talk to these women. They really are very easy to talk to. They don't give you no looks. I mean, there may be some from time to time you might have, mm -hmm. them, but in general, African women probably, I always say, this is gonna sound kind of funny, but I'm a comedian so I can say these kind of things. <laughs> when you, when, the only thing, I, I had, a, after a while I started having issues with African American women, like a lot of us men. Mm -hmm. And, and that, not that it's their fault that they've gone through the things they've gone through, but after a while you get like, I don't really wanna date African American women. And that's kind of where I got to before I came here. I was like. I don't really want to date African American women, and you know, and I'm nothing against them. But now that I'm in Africa, I'm like, yeah, I see that African women are the kind of women that I've, our, our women always have strived to be. But because of the trauma that they went through, they kind of lost that, and, and that's why I never blame them for the situation our black women in America are going through. But when you see the African women, you see almost a reflection of what our women really has always wanted to be, because these African African women really are. Um, gems man you, you can't help but want to just take care of them and make them the most happiest person on the planet so that's kind of how i approach it but yeah the women here body type hair everything you want is here it's a melting pot in africa that's the beauty you can come here and i'll be honest with them be really honest with you. that's why it's hard to just get one <laughs> that's what i wanted to ask you so you say it's very diverse man i was in a group and they posted a picture or a guy posted a picture and he was like i'm trying to get into africa but um it's hard when all the women look like this. And man, you know, he had to pick the worst picture he could find. And you know, basically what the ideal that he was pushing was that all women, Africa isn't diverse. You're gonna literally have twins in every country. You know, everybody's gonna look the same. So would you say it's diverse? Like, would you say you could find a, a short woman, a tall woman, a dark woman, a light woman, Absolutely. all of that? Absolutely. Oh man, you can, man, you, you can literally write out what you want and go find it. Like just write it on, write, write some notes. I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. And just go, they, okay, they go, okay. They, you can find anything you want here. These women are here, beautiful. And they're, they're all, there's tons of them, first of all. And so when I said take one, I should have said love one because it's all about loving our, these women and, and, and our women at home too. But it, you can find, there ain't nothing you can't find here. It's almost like a kid in the candy store. And, it, and sometimes that's dangerous for some men because some of us don't have the self-control that you need to have with that. Because you get that many women like, you don't know what to do, but for the brothers that are self-controlled and honorable to these women, you can literally find anything you want, man, because these they come in all shapes and sizes. They're like an ice cream store, all different varieties and flavors. You just like, and it sounds funny to talk to women, talk about women like that, but I think women were created to be very versatile and give us all these different options because women keep us lined up. 
they keep us balanced. They keep us in alignment. And without them, we don't have, men don't have nothing Fact. without them. We have to have them in alignment for us so we, so we can be in alignment. So, yeah, you can find anything. Ain't no excuse for no brother. I don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear no man say that he can't find nothing in Africa because it's here. Right. I think I found my opening to my video because he went in on that part. So that's that's my opening right there. All right, man. I appreciate you for your time, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So you want to give yourself a shout out where we can find you, your social media and all that stuff? Definitely. Well, you definitely can find me on my YouTube, YouTube channel. Gerard is in Africa. You got to put the y'all in the end of that, too. Gerard is in Africa, y'all. Okay. So uh, that's the YouTube channel. Pretty much everything is there. You go there. You can sit, find the music. You find the stuff where I talk about how to have a, how to have a healthy polygamous relationship, how to love care for two women and they both happy and you know all that kind of stuff so that's there just so people know that's how i get down but then you know the music is there the comedy will be there the movies will be there everything i'm doing i just like i told you yesterday man, i came to africa to hit the ground running i came to africa to tear it up and that's what i'm here to do before i get out the planet all right bet we appreciate your time definitely definitely all right peace